The Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, new treatment options for people with varicose veins or any unsightly veins, and especially painful veins, even ankles that have ulcers. Uh, there is hope, according to my first guest, Dr. Hamilton. Dr. Hamilton, welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much, Randy. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Big topic. Uh, you're an interventional radiologist. Now, before we get into today's topic, mm -hmm. uh, big topic, Tell us a little bit about your practice. I mean, who's the typical patient that, that, that you see? I have a couple of different groups of patients that come in mainly. Um, one, it's women that are about 30, 40 years old. They've had a couple of children. They have jobs, involve a lot of standing up. Um, and they've got these veins that are, they hurt. They ache. Is that right? You know, because going into this, I, I told you on the phone, it, it, this seems more of a cosmetic issue. You said that right, it's not right. the case. No, really? it, it, there's really a lot more to it. Most people do just see this as a cosmetic issue, but these um, these veins really impact the way that these people work. I mean, they're at work, they've got to sit down, they have to elevate their legs. How do they describe the way it feels? Usually as a heaviness or an achiness, sometimes cramps. Um, usually not as a sharp pain, but um, but it can be. So even in their 40s? Exactly, even in Is their 40s, right? even in their 30s. And so that's one group, mainly these okay. women that come in at that age. Men have the same kind of problems, but they just don't go to the doctor as okay, much they as put it off. They so put they it just off. put it off. And then another category of patients that I see a lot of are elderly patients in their 60s, 70s, 80s. They've had varicose veins for decades, and they've just gotten progressively worse. They were either told or thought that nothing could be done to treat so them. So even the big ropey veins even, can be done non-surgically the these big, days? Even the big ropey ones are done non-surgically, and those are the people that end up having excellent results. And are, are those even happy. easier, by the way, than the smaller veins? They're, in some ways, they are easier. Um, okay. They really... The, the benefits that those people get are tremendous, and so they, they're very happy people once those get treated. Where do you stand on technology? I mean, do you have all the new stuff? I do. I, the I, next generation of whatever's being done to get rid of veins? I have? do. I do. And, in fact, I've done all the different kinds of new technology. The, the new tech, when the laser was the new technology, I've been doing that, the, the laser that goes on the inside of the veins. Um, currently, I'm using radio frequency generated um, heat to close these veins. So is that the new, hot, veins. most effective that, way? That's the newest, most effective way with the least amount of pain. The, the laser is very good, it's very effective, um, but really it's, it, it's overkill. It heats up the vein to about 800 degrees on the inside, and it causes a lot of bruising and discomfort. And So you don't use it anymore? I don't use that. I, I've okay. converted over to this radio frequency ablation technique, and I use ultrasound guidance with that, and, and the combination's fantastic. Let's talk about your background, by sure. the way. And, 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 and I want a lot of questions about you know, what you're doing with the big ropey veins, uh, how, you know, and, and, and also with the, you know, the, the smaller veins, and how do you keep them from coming back? But first, your background. Sure. Uh, your your father was a doctor. Yes. Your grandfather was my a doctor. My grandfather and my great grandfather, and actually my great great grandfather. They were Is that all. Right? That's they interesting. Were, they're all in Texas. So uh, we've got five generations of Texas doctors. Did you always want to be a doctor? No, I did not. As a matter really? of fact, I um, started out in economics and then um, changed my mind and. Then Interesting. Went to medical school. Interventional radiologist. Uh, yes. What is it, and why does it equip you to do veins very well? Because uh, I, I didn't quite get that. Why? Well, a lot of my background is a diagnostic radiologist. I do a lot of ultrasound, and that really lets me sort out what's wrong with the veins. Is the blood flowing the right way? Are the veins too big? Are they too small? And then interventional radiology is where I do image-guided procedures. So looking for a guy, and we, you know, we, yes. we've talked at least half an hour on the phone, but mm -hmm. when you're looking for a vein doctor, yes. finding the root cause is very important why. It's, so they won't come back? It's, it's critical because usually even though patients may have a whole bunch of varicose veins, bulging veins all over their legs, there's usually one or two causes for that. And there, you have to find where the problem is to be able to treat these veins effectively. Or what, they come back? Or, or they'll come back, or they may not go all away in the first place. Um, if people hurt because of this, they their pain will not go away if you um, 
don't find the cause now, of the problem. Everything we're talking about, we're talking about right. new treatment options for people with uh, vein problems, you call yes. it vein disease, varicose veins, mm-hmm. spider veins, etc. Insurance covers just about everything we're talking about. It, yes. If they have pain, if they have symptoms. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. A lot of people, you know, they just don't like the way their veins look. They know it's a cosmetic issue. But what they also usually don't understand is all the problems that they're having that they may not associate with their veins. Um, a lot of people, like we said, have heaviness, aching legs, are tired. Um, some people, when they're driving in the car, their lights get so heavy that they tell me they can barely get them out of the car. Is that right? And, and so these people don't realize that this is one thing that insurance companies and Medicare look for. They, they want to know if this vein disease is really impacting someone's life and if it's involving their activities of daily living, like cooking, taking care of the kids, cleaning the house, going shopping, working. Those are things that legitimate companies and Medicare see as um, real reasons to, to get this done. Let's begin with varicose veins. Okay, so a patient goes through with varicose veins. What takes place on day one? What do they want to know? I mean, they must ask you the same thing every time. They do, and um, just starting with day one, when they come in, I do a standard history and physical, and I talk to the patients about their veins. Part of the history and physical is finding out what kind of problems they're having um, with their veins. And they'll some usually of them, say what? They'll usually say they're heavy, they ache, some people's itch or burn, different things like that. Some people say they don't have any symptoms, they just don't like the way they look. So some have no symptoms. Some have no symptoms. Um, but, you know, upon talking to these people a little bit more and asking them some questions about, um, you know, how far can they walk? Have they always been able to walk that far? I start to find out that their legs have started, you know, over a period of years feeling heavier, they're more tired, um, they've got to elevate their legs more often, they just can't do the same things they were used to doing. Isn't it just part of aging though? Yeah, that's what most people chalk it up to. They assume that it's part of aging or I've gained a little bit of weight and really um, it's not. When they have these bulging veins, it's a circulation problem. The blood's usually flowing the wrong way in the veins and when that happens, they get symptoms whether they really attribute it to the veins or not, but their veins are heavier, they can't play with their kids as much as they want to. The more I start talking to these people, the more I realize, and and they realize, that their life is really compromised by these heavy legs, and it's coming from their varicose veins, and they just haven't been able to um, associate the problems that they're having with their varicose veins. In your mind, knowing what you know, yes, a woman out there with varicose veins, yes, a man, they you, as you say, they think they don't have any symptoms. Okay, just right. the tired legs are right. just a part of life, etc. Okay, yes. um, are they headed in the way your mind thinks? Are they headed toward not disaster, but I mean, are they headed? I mean, it it's, it's going to get worse. It may not be disaster, but it's certainly going to get worse. The the thing about vein disease is that as long as people are are standing upright, the veins are going to get worse. They they get bigger and bigger, and the skin starts to change, and then ulcers can form. And unfortunately, it's just a natural progression of this um, disease. What do they ask you, by the way? What are the frequently asked questions? Okay, they have a, they come with a big vein. Sure. What do they want to know? A lot of want to know. Does it hurt to treat it? And, yeah. Good um, question. You know, and it really doesn't. Um, these, it, it's virtually a um, pain-free procedure. I do it in the do office. Do they say that? Is that right? Yes, they do. And in fact, most of the time after I treat patients, they don't even realize that. I've treated them and that I'm done with the procedure. <laughs> You're kidding me. Okay. No, I'm serious. These when are you going to start? It's, it's is been, that what they that's, say? That's a frequent one. And then uh, another one is, I didn't feel anything. That was... When did you put you know, numbing? Top. I, I do. I put, I put oh, numbing okay. medicine in there. That's your secret. Then. That's the secret. And also, <laughs> usually give them a couple of pills beforehand, like Valium, to, to okay, help good. them relax before. And um, cause everyone's anxious, especially before their first treatment. And then I, um, I numb up the vein and... And then they don't feel anything else after that. The so heating are you on the inside of the vein, the vein? are you yes. dissolving the vein? I, I collapse the vein. Um, I put the catheter, the little tube in there that heats up inside the vein. It heats up. It collapses the vein. It also heats up the inside of it. It basically burns the inside of the vein. People don't feel any of that because of the numbing medicine. And then the vein actually grows together. So the sides of the vein um, grow together so no more blood flow and they don't can need go that through vein. it. They do not need that vein. In fact, once we close the vein, it, um, it really improves the circulation in their legs. Like a week later, two weeks later, do they tell you? Oh, yeah, what absolutely. Absolutely. When Bill come in and for a week follow-up, they say, my legs feel better, they feel lighter. I wish I'd known about this so long ago. I'm so happy I did this. Um, you know, when can we treat the other leg? They're they're very excited to really to, to know that there's help. You know what's out interesting there. you said on the phone, you said, Randy, it's mm-hmm. tough to get them in the first time. 
Yes. So once we get them in and they realize there's nothing to be afraid of, right. then the second treatment is easy. That, that's exactly is that right. That, that's exactly right. These people are so pleasantly surprised after their first treatment that they they come back so as you do soon one as leg they at can. A time. I do one leg at a time. And what I want to do is make sure the treatment's worked, make sure that that vein is closed the way we want it to be closed, make sure that there are no clots and veins that we don't want clots in, and um, just make sure that they're doing okay. And then we move on Do to you the do next. combination procedures, uh, sclerotherapy? Yes, yes. You do I'll, sclerotherapy every day? Every day. Every day we do sclerotherapy, and we close these larger veins every day. Okay, but backing up for a moment. Okay, so you, you do the treatment, big ropey vein. Yes. Okay. You choose the treatment. Yes. That you've, you've, how long does it take? I mean, how long does the procedure last? And how soon can they walk home? Do they need somebody to drive them? Um, it takes about 30 minutes to do the procedure. And um, someone drives them home, usually because I give them some medication to um, help them, them. relax. Okay. Um, but there's really no recovery time after this. And that's what's so surprising to these people. I, As they're leaving our office, I ask them to go walk for 30 minutes somewhere. And um, they go outside, then go to the mall, wherever they want to go. But there is no downtime after this procedure. So, so they're treated, they're walking around. The next day, they're, they're back at work or doing whatever they want to do. So no more varicose veins. So no more varicose veins. Shouldn't have varicose so. veins with technology today. <laughs> there's really, there's and stripping, great, yes. this, this, this procedure in a hospital. Yes. It's still being done. It, it's still being done. But it there, doesn't have to be. It so. doesn't have to be done. It's really... It's outdated? Uh, it, it's, it's outdated. It's really... Um, there's almost always a, a better option for that now. Okay. And um, closing these veins on the inside like we do using ultrasound guidance and um, the radio frequency ablation is really the best way to do this. In your town, are there, yes. uh, are there other doctors doing veins? There's other doctors. Yes. Are there things you're doing that other guys aren't doing when um, it comes to eliminating veins? When it, the, the main thing that I'm doing that I really see as special to our practice is I spend a lot of time ultrasounding each patient to find out exactly what the underlying problem is so that so I they can, won't come back so they won't come back we find what the underlying problem is we treat that the first time we treat it correctly and we have very high success rates with that so ultrasound is one of those things that uh, I guess there's a big learning curve there's a huge is that right there's a huge learning curve to it it is um, it takes a lot of time ultrasounding patient holding the ultrasound transducer and it may sound kind of silly but it really takes a lot of practice it is not something that you can go buy an ultrasound machine and all of a sudden you know how to ultrasound now people need to know this by the way and this is not an endorsement for you i should mention <laughs> that uh on my program it airs throughout the united states and canada and i'll have doctors that get out of the er i have doctors that are gps i have cosmetic surgeons plastic surgeons they want to dabble in this and they want to use my show and they they're they're just breaking into the business Okay. Right. Uh, so what should a patient look for in a doctor that's going to be doing this procedure, in your opinion? I really think you've got to find someone that treats a lot of vein disease and is really comfortable with ultrasound. Typically, those people are, are vascular surgeons who have a large vein practice or interventional radiologists. Okay. Um, and, and even more than that, people really need to ask and they need to to find out if that person's comfortable with ultrasound, if they really know how to do ultrasound. Is it fair to say how long have you been using ultrasound? I, I think it's completely fair. How long fair. have you been using it? I've been using it for about 20 years now. 20 years. And I I have a lot of experience using ultrasound. In your mind, do yes. you think it's, it's, it's uh, that, that knowing what you know about ultrasound, yes. to do it any other way would just not be as effective, period? It, it's not as effective, period. Okay, okay. Because you don't unless you really know what you're looking for and using ultrasound and finding the problem and treating the problem, part of it you're just guessing. And, and this kind of thing, it's not like a chest x-ray. You can send someone for a chest x-ray, you get a report back, it says pneumonia, you can treat their pneumonia. Ultrasound's not like that. You, you've got to hold that transducer, you've got to see which way the blood's flowing, and you, you've got to sort out which veins okay, need to be treated. if you're a specialist, okay, yes. does it cost more to go to somebody like you? I mean, it's, insurance covers it anyway. It, insurance covers it anyway, but you no. you have symptoms. Right. It, you know, it's not more expensive so to see someone. So look for a specialist. It, look for a specialist. Because the thing about going to a specialist also is that they're more efficient. Um, we know what to look for. We, we find the problem. If we need an ultrasound, I do the ultrasound. Um, it's, there's, there are no wasted steps in this. And, and so it's a much more effective, efficient way to get it done. And it does not cost more to see okay. someone like me. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We come back. Okay. More questions about what you can do for spider veins. And a few more questions about varicose veins. You're watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back. 
You are watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, hot topic, new treatment options for people with varicose veins. With us, we have an expert on the topic, interventional radiologist, Dr. Hamilton. Okay, Dr. Hamilton. Okay, okay. recap. Uh, misconceptions, though, about what you do to get rid of veins. Uh, one of them is stripping. A lot of people have heard of vein stripping, which is a very unpleasant um, surgical procedure. It's done in a hospital. It takes a lot of recovery. And, um, not what, necessary anymore. It's not necessary anymore. Okay. Um, now we can treat them without really any pain, to tell you the truth, in the office. It um, takes about 30, 45 minutes. Um, there's basically no recovery now, after this. Pain, by the way, because we've learned this from our programs in the past, and these are real interviews. Nobody's reading cue cards uh-huh. here. And that is that uh, it's virtually painless. Yeah, okay. I mean, but they don't, they don't uh, complain about pain? No. Is that what you're saying? They really don't. But they really don't. They okay. Don't. They don't. Okay. Honestly. So what else? What's another misconception? Another one is that it really costs a lot to get these fixed. A lot of people just see them as cosmetic issues since they don't realize how much um, discomfort they're having from them and, and pain. And this is a big problem, by the way, nationwide. I mean, are there any estimates? Because I never see it. Veins are a huge issue. It's just that you don't see it a whole lot because... Yeah, so I don't see it. People wear long pants. They um, cover up their veins. They're they're embarrassed okay, about them. Okay, good point. And, and so you just don't see them. But... but Overall, it's a very common condition that people have. Now, we are out of time, but spider veins. Uh, what do you want people to know about what you could do for spider veins? Well, we can certainly treat spider veins. And, um, you know, my advice to people that, that have spider veins that are changing the clothes they're wearing or if they're not swimming and, and they want to get them addressed, they, they really should go to someone that treats veins a lot, either okay. a vascular surgeon or an interventional radiologist. And really, the, the reason for that is that there can frequently be underlying problems in the bigger veins that will cause these spider veins to come back if they're treated. And if the underlying problem's not addressed, it's just not going to work. Because I've been told that's a problem with spider veins, is they come back after treatment. They, and you're saying that's in the hands of the person that, that did the procedure. That really, that's a big part is of it. Right? Is. Yes, it okay. is. Once they're treated correctly, those veins won't come back. New ones can develop, but they can develop a lot more if there's a bigger problem underneath and that's is that, not addressed. Are you using the sclerotherapy with that or you're still using this ultrasound involved we'll, in those? Um, we'll use ultrasound in some of those patients if if I think that they have a, a larger vein issue underneath to, to sort that out. And if they do have a larger vein issue underneath, um, that really needs to be addressed before the spider veins are going to be fixed. Or else, no one's going to be happy Okay, so that. men men with, uh, uh, you know, we haven't talked about men, but... right. If they have heavy legs or, or, or yes. varicose veins, yes. if they see veins popping out. If it's... they see veins popping out, it means that there's abnormal blood flow in there. The, the circulation is not right in the legs because normal veins do not bulge out. And so typically... So it's making their legs heavy. Yes. And so what it is is that vein, usually the blood's going backward in the vein. The vein bulges. It gets heavy. It gets sore. And that's really the best time to to get these veins evaluated because it will only get worse over time. And if it goes on long enough, more veins will develop and um, then brown areas develop around the ankles and ulcers develop and, and all of that can be prevented when it's treated early. Okay, the hardest message, and we are out of time, to get across, is yes. it that, because you said, you know, Randy, they could have itching, you know, tired legs, painful legs. You said, but that's not most of the patients. Most of the patients have these big, ugly veins and their legs are tired at the end of the day, and they think it's because of age. That's it. So what do you say to somebody watching this right now? I'd say... What are the symptoms? The, I mean, the, how will they know that their veins are causing them a problem? Typically, they're going to have big, bulging veins, and okay. so they'll know that. But they'll just sort of think that their legs have gotten tighter. They've got, it's a normal part of aging. Um, they can't do as much as they could 10, 15 years ago, um, and that's... Is it tingly legs or mostly tired usually legs? Usually tired legs, achy legs, sore. Not too many people really come in and say, these veins really hurt right here. A few will, but most of them, they're just, they don't have as much energy. So that, after eight hours of work, to. maybe they... they after uh, eight hours of work, they're they're worn out, and they're, they're putting their legs up because they hurt so bad, and they chalk it up to, I'm just... I'm just getting older. And in fact, that's not a part of getting older. And that is something that we can fix. It's great stuff. I mean, you know, very, very interesting. But you say you're changing people's lives every day. You know, I really am. And um, I mean, an example. Give me an example. I have one lady that I traded. She's in her mid 70s or so. She's had ulcers on her ankles for 25 years. Okay. And um, she used to love to dance. That was her favorite thing. She was told she couldn't dance 
while she had these big ulcers, they get infected. Well, I treated her veins, her ulcers healed. Now she's dancing, she's happy. She's, she brought me homemade tortillas the other day. I mean, she's just <laughs> Is that she's right? very pleased. You don't get that in other medical you, specialties, you just do don't. you? You just really don't, at least I never have. Okay. And, and so, you know, another lady that I've taken care of is this um, 30-year-old woman, very attractive, had a big cluster of varicose veins on the back of her calf. And she wouldn't wear shorts, wouldn't wear bathing suits, wouldn't do any of that. And so anyway, so we treated those, and she's like a new person. Now she's wearing skirts that she's wanted to wear, bathing suits that she's wanted to wear. And it's really just given her a whole new outlook on, on what she can wear and do. So is it a lot of moms? I mean, after pregnancy, veins pop yes, up? Yes, that, that's a very common one. A lot of women get varicose veins during pregnancy. And um, a lot of them will go away after pregnancy. And if they go away, then that's great. Uh, I had a patient recently. She had a couple of children. She had varicose veins. They never went away after her pregnancy. She went back to work. And you know, her work, she, she was standing a lot. And her legs got so uncomfortable that she really, it, it really compromised what she could do with her kids. So she was trying to do activities where... Uncomfortable how so? Her legs hurt. They were sore. They were achy. They were tired. So her legs are heavy. They're, you know, I mean, really hard for her to work. And she's not able to do everything she wants to with her children. Okay. And so she goes to see her doctor. He sends, the, sends her to me. And I evaluate her. And she does. She has some big varicose veins. I do an ultrasound. She has backward flow in one of the big veins in each leg. And um, Like when you evaluate this yes. patient, by the way. Yes. Like when you hear her symptoms, look at the, the veins, do you think... I mean, like, even before you do the imaging, do you go, oh, my goodness, this is going to be great? Yes. I, does I, that go through I, your mind? Yes, it does, absolutely. Because I, I, I know most of the time what the problem is or should be, and so then we further evaluate it with ultrasound. So then we do our evaluation. I tell her what I think the problem is and okay. how we can treat it, and then we schedule her for an ultrasound if she wants to move forward with it. And so then I do the ultrasound, and we sort out the problem, and in her case, it's really a pretty common thing that I see, is that the actual problem is in the thigh, and her symptoms are on her calf, the varicose veins in her calf, that's the part that's really heavy. And um, so I explained that to her, and I told her that we need to close the veins in the thigh, and then that's gonna cause the veins in the calf to, to get smaller, her pain's gonna go away. And so then in the next visit, that's what we do. And I, I close the, the vein in her thigh on her right leg, she comes back a few days later, and I closed the vein in her left thigh. And she came back to see us a week later, and she felt like a new person. The, the pain in her legs had gone, the heaviness had gone, the discomfort, she was able to play with her kids, do everything she wanted to with her kids. Work was not a problem for her anymore. It's just a, a huge difference. And part of the, the thing with this is it's really important to find someone that has some experience doing this because it's, one thing that I see pretty commonly is since the problems, her pain's in the calf, the heaviness is that there and the large veins are there, it's, it's very tempting to just go and remove those veins that are in the calf. Because that's what's showing. But because that's what you see and that's where her discomfort okay, is. Okay. The problem with it is, is that the real problem is up in her thigh and the blood's going backward in that vein. And unless that's addressed, the the veins will come back. Her pain will not go away. She is not going to be happy. Is that your number one frustration, by the way? I mean, if you had to say it, there's a problem in the world yes. of vein elimination yes. nationwide, it's just treating the area. It, 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 yes. Um, is that right? Unfortunately, people really will just treat what you can see and what really is um, that the patient describes as the problem. And it, it may be the, the symptomatic part where the discomfort is and all that, and I certainly understand that, but the source of it is really what I'm trying to get at. And, and she didn't complain about pain? No. Because when you think of the no. thigh, no. No, no, she did not. So that's what keeps them from coming back because you're that's exactly going right. to the source. Yes. Of the problem. Interesting. Yes. So I, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm really getting it upstream. And by that, I'm cutting the blood, the abnormal blood flow off to the leg and so they don't come back. And insurance covered that. Insurance covers that. Yes. And Medicare covers yeah. Medicare covers that in older heavy folks. Lanes, yes, it does. Yes. Anytime people get these get veins and their associated problems that interfere with their life, they um, then the insurance and Medicare covers it. We're out okay. of time, but okay. doctors will watch this show. 
yes. the medical show. What do you want them to know about what you're doing for ulcers and how effective your vein treatments are? What I really want them to know is that there's really good treatment and it really works for these patients with vein disease. And it doesn't matter what the stage of vein disease, bulging veins, ulcers, whatever it is, there's really good treatment and good. it really works well. All right. Final message to somebody with big veins, spider veins, just veins that they don't like, and especially if they have symptoms, what's uh, their first move? What do you recommend? I recommend that they should really call us and, okay. and get evaluated and at least find out what the options are for treatment because a lot of times people are really going to be surprised that there is good treatment available. It's effective treatment. It doesn't hurt. Insurance covers and, it. And insurance covers it. So I invite them to come in for a consultation and get some more information about right. treatment. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very, very much, Very interesting. Randy. Thank You've you. been watching The Wellness Hour, uh, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again, you can go on our website and just put in veins or vein uh, removal or vein elimination uh, or just Dr. Hamilton and uh, you can see it again. We'll post it there. We'll probably make sure that you have it on your website well, as well. Thank you. And uh, for now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.